underlying EBIT, 485 million Aussie. You've maintained your guidance, 900 to 960. So the math tells me we should expect a slight moderation in your earnings to at best, I guess, what, 475 million Aussie in this current half? Uh, look, I'm, I'm just going to talk about earnings over the full 12-month uh, full uh, mm. period. Uh, what I'm saying is that earnings guidance uh, range is sound. Um, and then I have okay. to recognise that um, some of the things that we have to implement as part of the um, uh, our regulator's decision will cost, cost a few, ton, few million tonnes as we uh, finish out the year. Yeah, can you talk a little bit more about that adverse draft competition ruling? I'm sure not a lot of people outside the industry understand the dynamics there and how that actually impacts not just you, but also your entire industry. Yeah, look, we've had a, uh, we have a, a process where there's a draft decision and a final decision by the regulator. We've had the draft decision. Historically, there's not a lot of difference between the two, although... Uh, you do get an opportunity to comment uh, and respond to the draft decision. The decision that came through in draft is um, it, it actually causes what we see as actually uh, unrealistic um, actions to be taken um, from our um, uh, maintenance and our operating uh, point of view, and that would uh, not only adversely uh, impact ourselves, but that uh, clearly impacts um, the entire coal supply chain. So I've made that uh, known, but at the same time, because there's not a lot of difference between a final decision and the draft decision that we've seen um, historically, um, then I actually have to act to protect the business uh, in the meantime, because uh, a little bit more of a complication, and I'm sorry for this, is the draft decision actually applies from July of last year, so I'm already uh, mm. being impacted by, uh, by this decision. Andrew, will we see issues with getting the same amount of coal to your customers in Asia versus last year? Do you see issues with it? Um, so, uh, well, last year we were impacted by Cyclone Debbie, uh, which, you know, that was the most significant negative event, and that took some 16 uh, million tonnes out of the market. Um, with uh, saying that, though, um, you know, we, we put record volumes through in the last quarter uh, of uh, last year, and, um, you know, we were, we've been actually railing at a very, very good rate. Um, the decision has, uh, that, that's been issued by the regulator has an impact that's more than um, Cyclone Debbie, but spread out over the entire year. And uh, uh, at least in uh, to the half of this year, it, it actually has small impact because, you know, the uh, alignment actions we're undertaking have only got a few months to play out. But um, left um, as it is, it will definitely have an impact uh, year on year. I'm curious, when I read reports from analysts, they say that growth at Horizon will be under pressure simply because it's likely to lose its most valuable contract. What's your response to that view, Andrew? Well, I think what you saw was, um, as part of actually the, the share price reaction to data and um, results, was not just better than uh, expected results, but we'd actually uh, won some um, very significant contracts that... Um, uh, cut, uh, that analysts uh, obviously weren't expecting because there's a lot of commentary around that and we, uh, you know, it, it was only announced today. And I think that's a reaction to not only the underlying growth in uh, the coal business, which is not as negative as people thought, and it's got some positivity to it, both in the metallurgical and in the thermal coal. Thermal coal being, you know, um, into Asia, not, not globally. Um, and that's still a good market to sell into for some time to come. And I think people have just realised, hey, it's a, um, the market is actually positive and actually Horizon just today has, has um, actually announced, you know, two of the bigger wins in Australia. You've cited, Andrew, some, essentially the pickup in competition, putting some pressure, I would imagine, on, on a lot of the contract prices for coal. What's your outlook on the coal price moving ahead, broadly speaking? Look, um, uh, the fundamentals for both the metallurgical coal, uh, increasing demand, particularly driven out of India, and then thermal coal uh, in, you know, fundamentally the rest of Asia, I suppose, um, you're actually uh, seeing some good, strong uh, production results. Australian coal is high quality, um, and I think, um, you know, uh, that's um, playing a pretty good um, sort of prospects for a reasonable uh, period of time of, of good pricing. There's no doubt that, you know, it, it, on a historical basis, these prices are pretty high, and so it's only the fool would predict that they go on indefinitely. Uh, so at some point you could see uh, some sort of reversion in coal price, but um, it's looking pretty good at the moment. Um, there are other coal-producing provinces around the world, particularly in the thermal space, and, uh, you know, uh, high prices for a long enough time just drag in more competition. 
And Andrew, just, just broadly on, on the currency, we've seen uh, the Aussie dollar really uh, rally on the back, really, of just not, not, not really so much of an Aussie factor, but really because of the weak U.S. dollar. Uh, how much are you following the movement in the currency? Because I would imagine that affects not just your export prices, but your income when you take that back uh, into Australia. Yeah, look, so, so we don't actually participate in, um, in coal price. So we're, you know, as a rail company, we're mm. actually, uh, you know, the biggest impact on us is volume. Um, and we, we, you know, mm. there's a mechanism and contracts for charging the price of haulage. So, you know, the actual mm. um, Aussie dollar doesn't directly play um, too much in that space. Uh, Andrew, I'm looking at your stock price right now. It's dropped about 14% since late December. Do you think your stocks are underpriced and what can you do to, to boost shareholder returns? Yeah, so um, it's very easy for, from an analytical point of view to look at the share price drop since December. You can see when it actually started falling and it was as, actually directly as a result of the draft decision that came out by our regulator. Um, the, um, uh, the impact of that is actually the market read through on the regulation. Um, and, you know, uh, my task is obviously to um, adjust the um, business so that the uh, regulation has the minimum impact that it, it possibly can uh, on the business going forward.